The new Challengers was released on November 7th, 2014. This set not only bolstered the Duelist Alliance archetypes in Shadal, Burning Abyss, and Satellar Knight, but also introduced the first ever Tier 1 competitive Pendulum archetype in Cleefort. Shadal, Burning Abyss, and Cleefort would end up forming a Rock, Paper, Scissors, or Triangle meta where each deck would excel in one matchup and be vulnerable in another. In this series, both MBT and myself will be traversing the sands of Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. Each episode will take a deep dive into Yu-Gi-Oh!'s past formats and unlock new strategies as new sets become available. Strap yourselves in because anything is possible. Welcome to the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!! If you want 5% off any singles or sealed product, click the affiliate links in the description and use code SEMO5. And clicking the TCG Player affiliate link before you shop helps support us to provide you with more amazing content. I am so happy I get to talk about one of my favorite deck lists of all time. This is Patrick Hoban's first place list from the ARGCS in North Carolina held in November of 2014, and it is maybe the catalyst for how we build decks today. I mean, just look at it. It really resembles a modern deck, both in philosophy and in ratios. By November of 2014, Burning Abyss had received its second wave of support, including Rubik, Calcab, Alec, Virgil, and this card, Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss. This card's clearly extremely strong. I don't have to tell you that a better Icarus attack is good. But can you believe that there was a time when people were unsure if this was worth playing or not? That's because Burning Abyss builds could not decide what they wanted to be. A slower control style deck which made use of the floating effects of Graph and Seer to establish a resource loop backed up by stuff like Supply Squad and Mathematician, or a balls to the wall combo build that aimed to OTK exceptionally quickly. Patrick Hoban engineered a build of this deck playing a minimum of trap cards. I know that 11 seems like a lot to our modern sensibilities, but in Burning Abyss builds at the time, it was unheard of. That's mostly because Burning Abyss's resource loop is so powerful in a control strategy that it seems ridiculous not to take advantage of. But as you can see, we're only playing the three Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, five Chainable Traps in Phoenix Wing Windblast and Karma Cut, and three Vanity's Emptiness. This is to keep the Burning Abyss's hand effects online as long as possible because we are trying to spam. We're going to use the Burning Abyss monsters to facilitate extremely powerful synchro summons like Virgil, Rockstar of the Burning Abyss, to deal with troublesome monsters that float, and of course, Seer and Graph to make Dantes that plus us all the way to infinity. Every card in here that eats up the back row is activatable on your opponent's turn. And that means by the time it gets back to your turn, they will no longer be on the field and you can get the resource loop going once again. Hoban was already a legend at this point, but this showing at the ARGCS cemented his status in myth. This list is consistent, powerful, and the theory behind it took the deck building world by storm. That said, we have alluded that this is a triangle format. Cleford has a good matchup against Shadows and a middling one against Burning Abyss, and now we are going to test the remaining two points of that triangle, Burning Abyss versus Shadow, the less well-positioned of the two decks in this matchup. Shadow is extremely powerful, especially going into a deck that makes monsters from the extra. It turns their Shadow fusions on, letting one card make their entire board multiple times. That said, it's not like we are without tools entirely. Karma Cut and Phoenix Wing Windblast are extremely well positioned against cards like Construct, Vanity's Emptiness can trade for something like a Shadow Fusion, and of course, Virgil Rockstar of the Burning Abyss is great at tucking fusion monsters that have already resolved. One thing that will complicate this is that Alex is playing specifically Danko Dolls, which requires you to flip cards like Vanity's Emptiness extremely proactively and potentially fall victim to a pass and then an inability to get more monsters on your side of the field. That said, let's go into the individual card by card. We've got one Black Lesser Soldier Envoy at the beginning, three Cheer Malabranch of the Burning Abyss, three Graph Malabranch of the Burning Abyss, three Rubik Malabranch of the Burning Abyss, this is a tuner, three Scar Malabranch of the Burning Abyss, two Calcap Malabranch of the Burning Abyss, this card bounces set back row, one Alec, which negates monster effects, three Tour Guide from the Underworld, one Allure of Darkness, one Foolish Burial, triple Mystical Space Typhoon, one Rank Up Magic Astral Force. This card can be added back to your hand if you accidentally mill it, but it's great at getting Dante to convert into a Constellar Pleiades, which which does match up very well against Shadow. We've got one Soul Charge, three Upstart Goblin, three Fire Lake of the Burning Abyss, three Karma Cut, 
have three Phoenix Wing Wind Blast and three Vanity's Emptiness. The sideboard is designed to be partially transformational because you can special summon monsters from your hand ad nauseum. We play three copies of the Monarch Stormforth, three Vanity's Fiend, and three Majesty's Fiend. After game one, we will fundamentally be transforming our deck to sit on these guys. We've got two copies of Puppet Plant, one Bottomless Trap Hole, and three Fairy Wind for the Klee matchup. In the extra, we've got double Virgil Rockstar of the Burning Abyss. Importantly, getting one into rotation is good enough because we can then just cheer it back every turn. We've got a Chronomaly Crystal Chrononaut, a Constellar Pleiades, Triple Dante, Double Downard Magician, Ghost Trick Alucard, Giga Brilliant, Nightmare Shark, Acid Golem of Destruction, Zen Mains, and Heraldry Crest of Horror. So with that, let's jump into the games. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come full circle. I guess I should say full triangle because this is a triangle format. So after humiliating Joseph with his feeble attempt to play Cleefort, we now have given him a real deck and he actually knows how to play Burning Abyss. So hopefully he's going to have a better chance and maybe can actually take a win off of me for once. We're back on Shadal. And I like that we've been able to play different variants of Shadals every time just to track the evolution. This time we are playing Denko Dolls. And I think this is one of the most powerful versions of the deck deck because Denko Seca, which was released in the next challengers, adds a completely new dimension to how powerful this deck is. This card reads, while cannot be special summoned, while you control no set spells and traps, neither player can set spells and traps, nor activate spell trap cards that are set on the field. This means that when you're going second against the back row heavy decks, such as Burning Abyss or Klee, you can drop Denko Seca as your turn one play that immediately shuts off Vandy's Emptiness, shuts off Wind Blast, shuts off Karma Cut, any of their other cards are completely nullified and invalidated, and you are then free to go off and ideally OTK them is what you're looking to do, and the deck will also continue to further evolve from here, but this was one of the first iterations of the deck, and I'm really excited to be playing this. This deck is awesome. So let's do the card by card. We're back on the triple Y Reverser 1 Collapse Serpent Package because we want to actually just have a ton of refuelable monsters that we can just get more pressure onto the field, and also have slight access to be able to get into the rank 4 pool for Castell as well as Exiton. BLS, of course, because it's the best Chaos Monster we have access to. Double Denko some decks opted to play three and that's perfectly fine but this deck opted to play three mathematician as well so you don't want to go too heavy on the normal summons mathematician is much better going first and to be honest mathematician is probably better overall just because it sort of gets your engine going or denko is just a good way to sort of just close out the game but this being a light is very relevant then we have the shadals triple beast double dragon double falco double hedgehog and triple squamata and that does it for the monsters really like this lineup here continues to be iterated upon but this is probably one of the best shadal lineups we've seen thus far for the spells allure of darkness for draw power book of moon is at one and you know we're playing a flip deck but also book of moon is good in a myriad of different applications triple l should off fusion triple should off fusion double enemy controller speaking of ways just to get a ton of damage onto the field and also just have outs to a lot of really interesting things enemy controller is a card that sees play from time to time and is just an incredibly versatile card all the way back from ancient sanctuary i love this card to pieces and so i really hope we get to show off why this card is so cool foolish burial tutors for everything in the deck triple mst because vanities is in the format interesting this deck is opting not to play vanities but to be fair, this deck is looking to kill pretty rapidly, so I can sort of see the deck building reason behind not playing it. And then we have one super polymerization as well because this card is broken, but at the same time, it is a bit limiting in its application. And then the traps, triple shadow games, and a Shadal core. Hopefully, we get to show this card off a bit too. The extra consists of the triple construct, one Shekinaga, and two Winda. This is pretty standard for the deck around this time. For the synchros, we have Arcanite, we have Armades, we have Black Rose, Goyo, HTS, Saihemoth, a Leo Keeper of the Sacred Tree, as well as Yazi, Evil of the Yang Zing, and then the Xyz. We just have Castell and the Exiton because realistically that's all we need. And then the side deck, we have double maxi. There's a copy of Uguchi in here. I do not know why. I was thinking maybe this has to do with the time rules because you could just normal summon this and attack your opponent and win. But I don't think they made the change to the time rules where they just immediately call time until later on. Maybe this is just a meme. Maybe someone lost a bet and just had to play a meme card like this in their side deck. Double Vanity Fiend. This card's actually quite good though because going up against a deck like Burning Abyss or Shadal, you can just drop this and it's very difficult for someone to out it. That's why you see we have breakthrough skills actually in the side deck for if that happens to us, which it was very common for Burning Abyss players to do that because they can easily special summon a BA, sack it for either that or Majesty's Fiend, and then we are in a lot of trouble. We have Mind Control just because it's pretty good all around, as well as Raigeki. Triple Twister, this is pretty good just for being able to deal with stuff like more Floodgates, like Vanity's Emptiness, or even stuff like Shadow Imprisoning Mirror. A Bottomless Trap Hole, double Breakthrough Skill, as well as double Fairy Win, most likely for the Cleef Fort matchup, but it also adds Vanity's Emptiness, so that's not terrible either. Guys, I cannot wait to see how this one's going to go. We do have a favorable advantage here just because thanks to Shadal Fusion and BA basically always needing to stick something from the extra deck, it's going to help us generate a lot of advantage and keep us ahead, but we'll just have to see. Again, Joseph knows what he's doing. He's played BA before, so let's go ahead and not wait any longer. It's time to do it.
Well, Joseph, we have to complete the triangle of the triangle format we find ourselves in. And the only way to do that is if for you to not play Klee. So maybe now you'll be able to actually win a match. Yeah, really cool. I get to play one good matchup in which you just outplay the hell out of me. And now I get to play two exceptionally bad ones. Oh, boy. I can't wait to see if BA can beat the deck with Shadal Fusion. Who yeah. knows? What's, just, buddy, just don't play Dante and you'll be fine. Literally don't make Dante. I'm gonna, we're going to do Barbar beatdown. I mean, Barbar's not even out yet, oh, so you're not even going to get that far. Oh. But um, I am happy that we get to show off this version of Dolls because right. I, it's been fun being able to play a different variant of Shadal's every single time we brought it to the table, just showing like how much this deck evolved over the short course of time it was legal, especially just after getting one new set in new challengers. Even later on, the deck will continue to get streamlined and just further. I mean, even today, Winda still sees play because Winda's crazy, right? Um, mm -hmm. But I'm just excited to get into this. Let's go ahead and shout the patron. It is Alex X Joseph is OTP for the ages. Thank you for the support. Man, these, these got viewers. the hand up, buddy. Uh, oh, I don't know how much it matters. Yeah, I got the hand up. Odd. It's odd. It's a three, baby. Sh shocker. Who yeah. would have guessed? I did roll the die, though, in all fairness, and it came up five. So... Uh, that's going to be the number of games that I'm going to continue to win in <laughs> this era of Duelist Alliance. I'll go first. I will remember to not draw for turn because apparently I have issues with that. And I will wish you the best of luck. Let's go ahead and normal summon Mathematician fire the effect. Uh, yeah, who, who cares? Go ahead. All right. So Mathematician, let's go ahead and dump ourselves a copy of Squamata. And this deck, because it's made by a person who knows what they're doing, is playing three Squamata. Thank you, Cam Neal. I appreciate that. Uh, so we're going to try trigger the Squamata, and I'm going to get to pick another one here. I think, actually kind of tough based on my hand. I have like a few things I could do. I think I want to go for a Hedgehog here, as a matter of fact. Uh, and we'll trigger the Hedgehog, and that'll add us a copy of Falco to the hand. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and set one, set two, and uh, we're just going to throw it back. Oh my God. Okay. Draw for turn. All right, let's try it out. Uh, upstart Goblin. Thank you, Hoban. I'll gain a thousand. That's a decent one. All right, what the heck did Dolls play in the back row? You have El Shadal now, right? That is correct. Oh, New challengers wow. did give us Wonderful. El Shadal. Okay, so at any point, you could just kill me into the sun by El Shadaling into Sheki Naga. And I don't know if I can beat that. So let's go uh, tour guide. Fire the effect. I will chain El Shadal fusion. Oh, what a surprise. Who would have thought, right? Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of Beast and Falco and let's make wow. Winda. Wow, 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 wow. Okay. Uh, we will grab Skarm. Yeah. So I've got a couple triggers here off my El Shadal. So I have a Falco and a Beast. So we're going to special that Falco to the field and we get to draw a card. Winda shuts me down, but we did snag the Foolish, which means we can send That's pretty good. Alec here and negate your Winda. Well, let's see how far we can get, I suppose. It's Dante time. Anything here? I've got nothing. Go, go, Dante. We will detach Skarm and we'll mill three. Okay. Of course, oh, of course, oh, oh, of course. <laughs> I mean, it's, we'll get Rubik. Mm -hmm. uh, because we control no back row, I will declare Seer. Sure. We'll special Seer. It's a little wonky. Uh, we're going to go these two for Virgil. Virgil effect. I'm going to spin the Winda. Uh, we will trigger Cow Cab. I'll bounce this. Can I, yeah, spell traps. Uh, and then... I suppose let us proceed. Uh, we'll go to combat here. Sure. So, uh, Shadal Falco can summon back anybody? Shadal Falco uh, can special summon any Shadal. Yep. Okay. But that is a one effect per turn, and you've set it this turn, right? I set it this turn off of El Shadal. Correct. So, it right. won't get the flip. So, we will go for that one first, and I'll go ahead and give you the, uh, the joy. Appreciate that, buddy. Second main, I will set one card. My guy goes to defense. End phase, I will trigger Skarm. Get a tour guide, we I imagine. get a tour guide and pass turn. It's fascinating because, like, I'm not even in that terrible of a oh, position, whoa, whoa, even whoa, though you whoa, did. Whoa, 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 In draw phase. <laughs> I was well, like, then. you may want to see here. this Let card before you, uh, you say that. Before I go on my rant here, uh, what I was going to say is, 
Well, vanities does complicate things. It's fascinating because we're still at like parity in terms of card advantage, right? Yep. I did get my whole board wiped, but I still actually feel like I have a fighting chance here. You flipping Vanity's Emptiness obviously complicates things, but thankfully I'm the best player in the game and had the second Elshadolf fusion. Ooh. So I'm going to chain that to the Vanities so a that way I get cracked. the special summon. You're a little cracked. Yeah, that's fine. Um, So now I have to decide how I want to do this. Uh, we're going to have to go Squamata, and thankfully I drew a light in the form of... <laughs> oh, come of, on. Uh, we'll get rid of this copy of Wyber Burster. Okay, fine. Okay, so down comes Construct. Mm -hmm. And uh, now we get to trigger Construct. We're still in draw phase. You also get to trigger the Squamata, right? That's true, Squamata too. Thank you very much. Um, this is kind of weird. Um, you can always use Construct to out the Vanities, but if you want to be more proactive, you can even send like a dragon to out it. Main issue here is that you have both Dante and Virgil, so it's like a little bit rough. I can deal with both of them, but not like in the way that it's efficient to do. That's the that classic BA problem. It's like, yeah. yeah, I can wipe your board every turn, but honestly, what does that do? This is actually not a terrible idea. Okay, so off of the Squamata and the Construct, Construct. I'm going to bin core and fusion. Sure. And then trigger the core. I'm going to add fusion. Uh, okay. That's pretty good. Uh, so that was all in draw phase. So I can finally proceed to main one here. Yep. Uh, I'm going to immediately go to battle and just attack into Virgil. Okay. Uh, so Construct's effect is mandatory. It'll destroy Virgil. And then Virgil was destroyed by a card effect. So I'll draw a card. You chain a mandatory effect of Vanity's Emptiness triggers. And goodbye to this one. All right. Uh, second main here. Now we can start doing things. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and normal... Denko Seca. Man, okay. Makes me feel better that you had it. Flipping vanities and draw to play around Denko does lose to El Shadal Fusion, but waiting to chain it to the El Shadal Fusion loses to Denka, so. It's uh it's definitely <laughs> it's a it's a risky situation for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and banish this hedgehog for a copy of White Dragon Wyver Burster. Mm, you had two Wyver Bursters. Wait, you said you drew the light. Your whole hand was lights. All right, and we'll uh, overlay for a copy of Castell, the Sky Blaster Musketeer. I think this is actually the first time we're summoning this in history. Uh, I think I did it a couple of times in the Satellar. Oh, night. did you? Oh, Satellar. Yeah, yeah, you were playing Satellar. That's right, that's right. Okay, then before we fire the effect, now we're going to shit all fusion. Uh, this is uh, this is a pretty good turn for you, yeah. Uh, we'll dump Beast, and I guess we'll dump Falco. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll make Winda. Mm -hmm. Try to get the lock back on you a bit here. We'll trigger Beast and Falco, so I'll draw one, and I will special the Falco. Sure. And then we'll fire Castell, shuffle Dante back. Okay, and there he goes. And then I will set one card and wish you the best of luck. Drew a back row as well. Okay, uh, stand by main. Well, we're going to soul charge. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> yup. All right, what are you paying? Uh, we're, oh, 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 we're paying fucking four, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Are you, do, you, do, you, do you even got to ask here? Okay. Uh, Those are your targets? Yeah. Are you ready to get mega punished after you pay this 4,000 life are, points? Are you telling me the card you drew off Beast is going to beat the Soul Charge? <laughs> Book Virgil. <laughs> oh, that's not as bad as I thought it was. I mean, that's, don't get me wrong, that's fucking abysmal. That's really. I was bad. about to say, are you sure? <laughs> but it could be a lot um, worse. Uh, you have three monsters on the field that no longer can be on the field, sir. Oh. No, actually, it, it's it's as bad as it gets. Yeah, that's, uh, that's miserable. <laughs> All right, we tried. We tried. <laughs> Holy fuck. God, you really, you, oh, <laughs> I've never seen beast draws that good, uh, but. Uh, it, book is also good. limited if it makes you feel any better. That doesn't make me feel better at all, Allure of Darkness. That's fine, that's fine. All right, we'll banish it to our guide. Okay, uh, that means you have another one. Goblin. I'll gain a thousand. Foolish Burial. Uh, I will send Graph. Sounds good. Graph Effect. I will summon Skarm. All right, asshole, let's see you beat this. Oh, fuck, that's a card. <laughs> All right, we'll grab a seer here. Sure. Uh, well, thankfully, I am the best player in the game, and I drew, drew the one the of the one game. one of book twice, huh? That's really cool, <laughs> really epic. Yeah, isn't it? I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and run out a Shadal dragon. Yep, yep. And uh, I guess I will just 
attack over it. That's fine, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm guessing I'm going second main here. Yeah, I'll go second main. And I'll set one, and I will chuck it back to you. Anything in standby? Nope. All right, I will activate the effect of Seer. No response to the activation of Seer. You may summon him. Yay. Anything here? On resolution of that, yep. I will activate super polymerization. Ooh, that sucks. Yep, sure. That's I will pitch two should all beast. Yes. Okay. I will make Winda. I will set one and pass. Stand by main. Uh, I guess I have to play the beat down a bit here. What else could you possibly set? Uh, seer can't get seer. Graph could like get a seer. Uh, could just be a skarm. Yeah, I think I just have to start getting aggressive here. So I'm gonna run out Squamata. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna banish the dragon in my grave for a Wyver Burster. You got it. And I'll just go to battle. We'll just start hitting. Okay, it is Graph, uh, and I will okay. get. Garm. Sure. So this will give you a bit of protection here. Second main. Not really much else I can do about that. So I have already exhausted my one summon as well. So I'll just have to pass. Ah, it is so good to be an evil man. I will activate the monarch's stormforth. Oh God. Get this out of here. And now I will summon Majesty's fiend. Holy shit. Uh. <laughs> Yeah. Unfortunately, okay. the Scarm effect does not have to activate, so I do lose it. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to combat, and I will attack your Wyver Burster. Okay, so I'll take seven, and I will not activate the effect because Majesty's Fiend is up. Goodbye. <laughs> go turn. Ah, well. <laughs> sometimes you just gotta... don't have to activate that effect. Yeah, I guess not. I guess you don't. We'll just get in. All right, I'll take 10 million here. Okay, so six, 3K, and then 18 direct. Uh, second main, I just have a set, and I'll throw it back. Ooh, I wonder what that is. Gee, I wonder what that could be. Could be literally anything. Hey, I'm playing a whole deck of flip monsters. Oh, we finally get to normal tour guide. That is true. I no longer have, neither of us have a way to like lock out the other person from playing. That's fine. Okay, let's make Dante. Makes sense. We're just getting fishy. You, these are gonna have to be the best mills of your we're fucking life. Well, one of them's gonna be a seer, so that's pretty good. <laughs> 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 well, you know, sometimes I feel like... All right, we'll see her here. Uh, we'll just get Skarm. Makes sense. Uh, I'll reveal Alec. Uh, we are going to go for another Dante. Sounds good to me. Sometimes I'm Dante and I am a Dante. Da, 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 da. Uh, that's not the one. Put him over here and then move him back. Oh, those are better. Well, those are better. There's graph. Let's go graph. That was your last graph too. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm far beyond actually needing these cards. Oh, what do we want to get with graph? Is there like a high attack guy? What's the defense on Falco? It's 16. It's 14. You're assuming this is a Falco, Joseph. 14. <laughs> oh, the same attack as Calcab. Awesome. I will elect not to activate it. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. We go one into. What do you get back here? Yeah, we'll just get. We'll just get Seer. Sure. Uh, combat. We'll go Seer into just the... cleaning up. Unknown! Could be anything! anything. Could be anything! <laughs> That's fine. All right, we'll get window. Yep. Uh, let's go Dante into... Winda returns a spell trap. It returns a Shadal spell trap, of which I have none of, because I super polyed for window. Right, let's get this guy out of here. Yep. Uh, and then we'll go over Squamata as well. So I take seven on this one. Yeah. And now I will prove to you that I am the superior duelist. I activate... <laughs> Rank up magic astral. <gasps> no! <laughs> They're still playing this? Oh, yes, buddy. Oh, my God. Yep. Okay, so this unfortunately pops my seer. Uh, you don't have any other lights, and we're just going to hope that one of them never shows up. <laughs> so we're going to go Dante or effect. Uh, we're going to get back. I don't. Can, can we get back Vanity's Fiend? Is that an option? That would be nice. Uh, we'll just That'd get back nice. Seer. Um, yep. And then we'll go to end Resolve Skarm. Uh, I shockingly still have a tour guide left in here. So. All right. Good luck, buddy. <sighs> Maybe I should have kept the Beast and not the Winda. Uh, that is actually the worst draw on my deck. Uh, <laughs> great. I will set a card and pass. That, that, <laughs> that shit is going directly back in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Right, draw for turn, stand by main. Yep. Uh, yep. TGU. Sure. Go grab fucking cow cap. Who cares? 
Oh my god. Uh, we'll go overly these two for Dante. I should have made downer last turn. Oh, can I just kill you if I go acid golem? This is 25 25. Yeah. Wow. Dante. There it is. I mean. You don't have to go through the motions. It's fine. Oh, I'm dead. I'm oh dead. I just need to see the acid golem. So That's all I need. Oh, okay. <laughs> Boy, that was a fun game, wasn't it? You've been <laughs> annihilated by a superior duelist. I don't know what to tell you. That was literally, I played fucking Monarch for three games, and then we were like, oh, right, we have to play BA, of course. Yeah. How oh, unfortunate. We have to play looking... real decks. Ooh, I don't know about this one, baby. I am in the same boat as you. I think my turn is going to consist of me Woo! setting a card and passing. Let's go! All right. Upstart guy. See what you got. All right. I'll gain a thousand. going to have to draw me out of this. Tour guide. Seer. Okay. Well, we got this. What if we just stay like this? <laughs> Alex, what if... Just you, what, be a beat down? What if you and I stay like this forever? We don't ever have to... Oh, God. What if we just... But that set card could be dragon and I could lose. It could be... <laughs> oh, my God. It's just... It could be so, anything. There's so many bad ones. And then on the crack oh, deck, yeah. you're going to have a little card called Shadow Fusion. He's going for it. I'm going for it. Ooh, but what if I make, like, Chronomaly Crystal Coconut here? Ooh. Stop. Just... <laughs> it's like I can't even make Alucard, right? Because if I pop your fucking guy... <laughs> And it's like Falco. Uh, it would have to be Squamata or Squamata. Here. Squamata yeah. would be so goddamn good. Actually, Squamata would be terrible. All right, we're always going Dante. Makes sense. I think realistically, it's like 50-50 on the set. If it's like, if you hit it, if it's good or bad. Graph. Okay. Rubik. Ooh, okay. Okay, I'm with you. Virgil, Dante. You're gonna play it safe? Oh, okay, we're gonna Dante first. So that's fine. <sighs> I don't know what I'm even looking for. Skarm? Ooh. Not that. Uh, Nothing. Okay, let's sear back the... Wow, none of these guys have any attack stats. Uh, the Graph. Thousand, yeah. <laughs> We're going to Virgil. Pitching Graph. Yep, sure. In this bad boy. It's gone. Uh, let's go to combat. Go this is 6,000. 25, 25, 1,000. Uh, man. <laughs> That's a rough one, buddy. All right. Uh, kind of needed to hit anything off of that Dante mill, but I didn't. Uh, so back to you. Okay. Start with the lore of darkness. Yeah, that's a really good one. Indeed. Okay, I think I have to banish beast here. Okay. Jet off. Yeah. If it makes you feel any better, I had it prior to using a lure. I mean, I figured you had to be bricking on something. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and dump a copy of Wyverburster Squamata. I'm gonna go for construct. Uh, so we'll trigger the Squamata here and the Construct, so I get two sins. I'm going to dump a Beast and a Falco. And I'll trigger both of those, so I'll draw off the Beast, and then Falco will set itself. Yep. I'll banish the Wyver Burster for a Collapse Serpent. Still with you. I'm going to sack the Falco for Vanity's Fiend. Oh, uh, we're, we're, we're all here. The gang is all here. Rideki. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that is really something. I'm so close to lethaling you, but there's just like, I can't make up like the little bit of damage that I need. Okay, uh, we're going to go Dante here. We'll grab uh, the Seer. Yep, and then Virgil, uh, you get to draw. Yep. Uh, 18, 24, 28. And then second main, I've got a back row. Go ahead. Uh, I will allure. Sure. Uh, I'm going to banish Skarm. We're going to upstart. Okay, puts me out of death range. Stormforth. Jesus. Guessing uh, the Vanity Fiend's going. You know, I don't think it is. Um, we're really? We're going to the Construct for our own Vanity Fiend. I see. Uh, I'll trigger Construct to get Shadal Fusion back. Yeah. Combat here. Ugh, getting the Dolph is so crusty. I'd like to crash into the Vanity Fiend so that I can make my plays. Then I get Dolph used out of this game. Uh, so I'll try for the crash here. Crash is fine. Second main, we will go Seer, Rubik, and I'll make Dante. Or do we make Dante at all? I'm gonna try what's called a pro gamer move. Okay. I'm just gonna end on the Seer and the Rubik. And just try to wall up? Yeah, cause I can okay. kill you next turn. 
What does this get punished by? Normal of four, go into Castell. Castell the Rubik, but then you still have to contend with the Seer. And the Seer represents like three guys. You could Castell the Seer, and then you have to contend with the Rubik. I'm in a tougher spot, but if I make Dante, I'm just giving you everything. If I make Dante, you go Doll Fusion for... Oh, you can wind me out of this game. Yeah, okay, I got a pass here. Interesting. All right, I'll draw. Well, that might just solve my problems. I think I'm just going to do this and see how far I go. All right, uh, I am going to activate Shadal Core. Wow. Uh, yeah, sure. Actually going to use this, and we're just going to hard use Shadal Fusion here. Do what you got to, baby. Uh, so I'm going to treat the core as a light so I can make construct. Uh, yeah. Uh... Yeah. So we have uh, two triggers here. So we have the construct and the core. The core will actually get me back the shit all fusion, and then the construct will dump me a card. So with that, I will go ahead and dump a squamata, thin my deck a little bit, and we'll trigger squamata, and we will dump a copy of a uh, hedgehog. Trigger hedgehog, we will get a dragon. Well, normal to dragon. Yes. Go for Castell. Uh-huh. Spin Seer. That is fine. Go. And then uh, this should be it. Yep, you got it. Oh, oh my man. God. Oh. I don't like remember that Shadal Core has another effect while it's on the field because that like never comes up. Ah, uh, yeah, help was yeah. on the way. Oh yeah. man, this was a um, this was a bleeder. Uh, yeah, this uh, this matchup ain't great. It's not ideal. No, no, it's it's it, you can definitely see the difference from like this versus like the Klee matchup, mm -hmm. where in the Klee matchup you had I was blanked on Shadal Fusion the whole time because right. there was just no way I could use it. And then this matchup, it's live literally every single turn of the game, essentially, yep. except for this last turn where you specifically went out of your way to not overlay for Dante. And it I was will still admit, live. it was a death sentence if you did it, though, because yeah, uh, no, then sure. I just get way too much advantage. I did that play for free. The fact that I, if I didn't have a way to make construct, I just wasn't able to get to this board state. Yeah, the hedgehog complicates things for sure. I was just kind of hoping you didn't have fours left, but. With that many dragons in, or with zero dragons seen this time. Uh, my deck is on a bunch of trap cards uh, that suck ass against Danko Seca, obviously. So in games two and three, I boarded them out for uh, Stormforth, Vanities, and Majesty's Fiend. These cards are kind of the way you have a fighting chance versus decks like this. Obviously, decks like Klee do not give, you know, a fuck if you have uh, Majesty's Fiend on the field. Uh, Vanities Fiend can be a kind of an alternate win con uh, for decks like this, where you, like, establish a... Dante and then you make a Vanity's Fiend and you're like, go. Like how on your yep. turn you were able to uh, do your board and on a construct and be like out this fiend uh jerk it is it is difficult for sure and it's an interesting board plan especially when your main game plan against me is just to establish a window which this deck has no way of beating um right and my out to your cards that out mine is virgil which is extremely powerful i am glad we got to show this guy off um yeah. matches up very well against the shadows but getting to him is such a liability it is very difficult. absolutely it is nice though that once you have him uh seer can just constantly keep bringing him back he's yep. just a new thing you can rotate it does break your dante seer loop but to be fair virgil is like strong enough that in some cases it's worth it any additional um, way to dante gets it back offline yeah exactly exactly so like that's perfectly fine anyway but you saw i was also on the fiends uh i wasn't on majesties i think most of the doll players were just playing vanities at this point and vanities is good enough against burning abyss just because if you're locking them out of special summoning then they're really not playing the game and the same goes for me as well right i mean i was very lucky that i had the outs to <laughs> vanities fiend and uh you know magic fiend and such in the form of like book of moon and such and so mm -hmm. without them we're we're just sitting ducks we we have no other ways i even boarded into uh breakthrough skills as well just to have Sheesh. more ways to be able to deal with it because our decks rely so heavily on special summoning we're we have no plays otherwise what mm -hmm. like what are we gonna do <laughs> like i also have the econ in the main deck i suppose but econ is good if i only have so guys, that's going to wrap it up for another video. I really hope you all enjoyed. Let's go ahead and shout the patrons for all of their continued support. So shout out to Shadow1317, Mono, Tim 0 x 3 Cameron Smith, MBT Play Medulce, Chaotic Meatball, Part 2, Pony Starks, The Synchro Guy, Dan the Man Hoban, I Ship MBT and Simo, Draconic Phoenix, The Immortal, Jordan Coons, Iron Bladesman, Jesse Wood, Chris Hood, David Liu, Dylan Hunter, Cody Bretz, John Two Based, Extremely Vulgar Man, Brody Eastwood, Zerius Business, MBT Caught Injecting His Fairy Lily, Carlos DT, Flannel Daddy, Valen Jackson, Hornet, Aren't You Glad I Didn't Say Alpha Tribute, Ben 10, T 
CC Gaming, thanks for the sleeve stat. Matthew Brady, Max Twinkle Muncher, Eater of Crayons, Luabon, Yodabon, Helios 515, Simo's Chaos Cooking Draft, MBT funding the Iris with his Rothschild Wealth, that's his Roth IRA, Simping for Simo, Stolfin Amethyst, Nicholas Carpenter, Simo's Harem of Sexy Yugi Tubers, LGM BTQ, Nim Noodle, Mal Branch of the Burning Tunnel, Stella and Zoe Vermillion, Wonder Waffle, James Keen, Skull Servant, and the Wandering Doomed are boyfriends. MBT cancel by all community soon, cancel by all committee soon, cancel by all players soon. Not reading cards makes the game interesting, and you know it. The MBT and MBT Yu Gi Oh stands for Morbin Time, The Undertaker versus Simo and MBT, Dalton, Hunter Reed, Shrugs IX, The Crystal Beast Enthusiast, ITF, Corvain, Dark Echo, TG Starman, Simus Engage, Viso the V, Wacky Waving, Arm Failing, Fable, Two Men Selling, Crudely Painted, Not So Funny, Plywood Cutout, Folk Art, and HatFormat.com. Thank you so much for watching the video, and we will see you next time.